So, it's no secret I play Dungeons & Dragons. I play weekly, or sometimes bi-weekly, depends on if we got some adult going on. Recently, I played and completed the Descent into Avernus campaign. Its story revolves around descending into hell and hanging out with demons and angels. Honestly, it's a pretty fucking metal storyline, but the point I want to get here, that the Descent into Avernus campaign is only one of the many pre-made campaigns that Dungeons & Dragons has out there. There are others like Tales of the Yawning Portal, Ice Wind Dale, Dragon of the Ice Spire Peak, and many others I'm sure I've never even heard of. The topic of today's video, Neverwinter, not to be confused with Neverwinter Nights, is a free-to-play MMO that also takes place in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. I previously covered Dungeons & Dragons online a few months back, and where that game is completely faithful to the tabletop D&D games in terms of its systems, it can be argued it's pretty archaic in today's gaming landscape. Neverwinter is essentially Dungeons & Dragons online in a more modern paint job and actually takes some of the pre-made campaign D&D stories and adapts them into playable content, Avernus actually being one of them. Neverwinter is developed by Cryptic Studios, a name attached to the critically acclaimed City of Heroes and other titles like Star Trek Online and Champions Online. It was released back in 2013 under Perfect World Entertainment, specifically for PC and then eventually coming to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 consoles. Neverwinter has had a 10-year long run with updates still coming with the game now being published under Gearbox Entertainment as of 2022. After getting a max level character and running through the game's daily grind as well as checking out other features like PvP, is Neverwinter worth playing? Here's my thoughts on Neverwinter after spending at least 30 plus hours with it. Character creation in Neverwinter has quite a number of different choices, varying from race, class, bonus ability points, and deity choice. The game sports a pretty hefty amount of races, varying from different types of elves, halflings, humans, dragonborns, half-orcs, and tieflings. Pretty much all the D&D races are here. Each race also sports a few passive perks that can lean certain races to be better as a certain class, depending on if you are looking to mid-max. I don't think min-maxers are bad. <gasps> You don't think min-maxers are bad? No. Class choice is also just as robust, having a total of nine classes to choose from, with each class having subclasses that you can specialize into called Paragon Paths, beginning at level 11. Ironically, you can have both Paragon Paths on one character using the Loadouts feature, which saves any builds you customize into, including that path choice, which essentially removes the need to have an alternate character for every class. The main class choice, however, cannot be swapped between. So depending on what role you are looking to play like tank, heals, or DPS, make sure you choose a class that can actually do it. Once you've chosen your race and class, you can then customize your character's look with a decent amount of options and sliders to mess with. Deity and starting background is also something you are given a choice on, but as the game states, it's only for flavor and has no actual effect on your character. The story of Neverwinter follows a few different D&D modules, as previously mentioned earlier in the video. Your journey begins with your character fighting the armies of the Draco Lich, led by the Lich Queen. This mission acts as the tutorial which will teach you combat, movement, interacting with objects, equipment, and progression. Once the tutorial is complete, you start within the Protector's Enclave in the city of Neverwinter, where you are given campaigns to complete from various NPCs like Sergeant Knox. The campaigns or adventures are small quest hubs that can be completed in about an hour. Each adventure Adventure will have you playing through a handful of quests, rewarding gear, gold, and levels. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec. Anyways, each adventure zone you play through acts as an extension of the tutorial until level 20, which is the max level in Neverwinter. The main gameplay loop, at least until endgame, revolves around these adventure zones, which if I'm being honest, are a bit boring because the questing is incredibly monotonous. Literally each quest can be summarized as kill 10 creatures, or interact with something five times. Lather, rinse, repeat at nauseum. This is so boring. 
Luckily, combat is a saving grace in Neverwinter, as it's a real-time action combat system. Left and right clicks are your on-demand attacks, with your hotkeys housing additional spells that are on cooldowns. Combat also has engaging mechanics, like dodging telegraphed attacks, or your special class gimmick like the Bard's Song Play that requires actual keyboard inputs in certain cases. So while yeah, the questing is rather boring in Neverwinter, at least the combat while you're questing is engaging. I will have to admit though that while the combat is fast paced and fun to play, it seems like the game itself can't keep up with it sometimes. There are times I'll be fighting enemies feeling like I am stringing together my spells in a way that maximizes my effectiveness, but other times things just feel really delayed. I'm not sure if it was just Neverwinter servers having issues during the certain times that I was playing, or if the combat itself just has slight delays. Animations would quite often lock up on me, or the game wouldn't recognize my button inputs right in the middle of combat, leaving my character sitting there. It's frustrating when it happens, but admittedly, it could have just been my own experience, and maybe I was really the only one who was running into it. Besides the adventure zones, you also have instance dungeons that are played either in the adventure zones or queued up for in the group finder, similar to other MMOs. Dungeons in this game have a variety of different flavors to experience. Normal dungeons are your standard multiplayer content, featuring multiple bosses, that you fight through, along with various other tasks. Advanced dungeons are obviously your harder tuned dungeons. Skirmishes are wave-based multiplayer PvE arenas that players who like horde-based games will enjoy. Dragon hunts are a more interactable queue that can be played either solo or with others. Hunts have a variety of modifiers that you can add to make the hunts more challenging but give better rewards. Epic trials are essentially your endgame raids that require 10 players and max gear to tackle. Finally, there is the Reaper's Challenge, which is a daily random dungeon that is scaled to a harder difficulty. There is quite a bit of dungeon-based content to experience here with other players when you start delving into the endgame or to break up the adventure zones. I can say, however, that while the early adventure zones are a lot more simple and straightforward, the later adventures that you unlock starting at level 20 get a lot more involved. You'll still have simple quests to complete within each one, but besides quests, you'll also be able to engage in open world content like the Heroic Encounters. Heroic Encounters work like any open world events in other MMOs. Fates like Final Fantasy XIV would be a prime example. The encounters reward items, gear, and currency, so it at least adds a bit of extra flavor to each zone besides just the simple quests that you are given. All of the content available to play ties your character progression, which in this game is dictated by your item level. Leveling up is more or less an afterthought in this game. Quests and monsters don't give experience and rather you level up through specific quests. Getting to the max level of 20 can be done in literally less than 10 hours or so if you plow through the early adventure zones and speed run your way to cap. Even going through the storyline slow though, it still doesn't take long at all to reach the cap of 20. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because all leveling up does is just unlock new spells, a few choice passive features, and your subclass at level 11. Sure, you gain a few stat points, but that's really all. The main focus of progression in this game is the aforementioned item level. As you play Neverwinter, quests you complete or enemies you kill will sometimes reward you new equipment that will raise your item level, making you stronger. Much of the early game is just getting as much equipment as possible that makes numbers go up without much thought on what you are actually equipping, but as you get to the end game, equipment starts opening up to more customization, which is where things like refinement and crafting comes in. Crafting feels like a mini game in Neverwinter because it's not just as simple as finding a crafting bench and making items. No, instead you complete a small quest that unlocks the workshop. The workshop has your character managing employees that will gather items and craft materials for you rather than your character directly directly making items. Once you have the workshop unlocked, you have your standard professions which include gathering, alchemy, armor smithing, artificing, blacksmithing, jewel crafting, leatherworking, and tailoring. Each profession requires an artisan to work, which you hire from the workshop management menu. To break things down simply, each profession requires an NPC to be able to craft within that profession. The artisans all have their own stats and profession assigned to them automatically, with some being better than others 
and obviously the premium artisans, which cost cash shop currency, are arguably the best, but of course not necessary. It's a shame there isn't an interview process or something to maybe give a bit of character to the artisans that you hire. Jobs you think you would be suited for. Let's see what you wrote. Cowboy, astronaut, warlock, more powerful astronaut, Upgrading your workshop allows you to gather more items at one time as well as hire more workers. Unfortunately, there isn't much incentive to really keep up with the workshop in this game, since most items you find through questing will be better than what you can craft unless you put a significant amount of time into it. From what I've read on crafting as well, it's more or less used for making gold rather than actually crafting anything worth using, which is a shame since it has such a neat idea surrounding it. PvP P in Neverwinter is unfortunately much like many of the other games I have covered on the channel. It's just not content that really gets supported. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Finding PvP matches in queue is pretty rare. Areas where open world PvP is available are pretty empty. It seems like really the only way to get into PvP on a regular basis is to find a guild that focuses on running PvP with their alliances or rival guilds. Speaking of guilds, guilds in Neverwinter actually have some of the best features I've seen in an MMORPG. First off, guilds have progression like levels, perks, and other goodies that are unlocked the more the guild is supported. Supported. The best perk is hands down the unique quest hub you get for being in a guild. The guild stronghold is an area that encourages grouping with your guildmates and running daily content. Here you'll find a hefty chunk of content to do within these strongholds that really incentivizes players to join a guild and become part of a community of players. It's rather smart actually. Besides all the dungeons, gear, and content for endgame, players also have the collections page and achievements. Achievements work like any other other game. Complete small challenges and you are rewarded with titles and other items that will further bolster your character. The collections page sort of works like Destiny 2, where you can keep track of specific special items you earn in Neverwinter. These items include mounts, equipment sets, artifact trinkets, companions, or event items. Completing collections gives further rewards which incentivizes players to complete specific adventure zones to 100% completion, which is a great way to keep content relevant for a long longer amount of time. Since the game is completely free to play, there is quite a number of players online running through all content all parts of the day from beginning to end game. It was pretty easy to find a guild to join and start running group content. So while Neverwinter isn't necessarily a big mainstream MMORPG like World of Warcraft, it definitely has a player base. Since the game is free to play though, there is definitely advantages to becoming a subscriber or spending money on the game. The cash shop has a lot of arguably pay to win items such as progression skips, XP boosters, premium race unlocks, battle passes, and loot boxes. However, the cash shop currency is completely tradable for a free currency called Astral Diamonds. Astral Diamonds are earned in content, so just playing the game will get you diamonds. Similar to other games, the diamonds can then be traded for cash shop currency so that you can then purchase those premium items if you want. So in summary, the cash shop items are all earnable through gameplay. It doesn't take away from the fact that if you want to, you can just pony up the money to skip all the grind which in some cases can be considered pay to win. Whether the cash shop is pay to win though is completely up to you. For what Neverwinter is, it's a decently casual MMORPG experience that doesn't ask for a ton of dedication. It felt very much like a drop in and out sort of game that I can check in on every now and then. It's a shame though that from what I read, the game used to have a much more involved gameplay experience, having a lot more quests to complete and a higher level cap with a more complex leveling system, but it was all streamlined to have a more casual approach. The Foundry was another feature I missed out on that was sadly removed back in 2019. The Foundry being a key feature that allowed players to create their own custom content in the game. If those systems still existed, I would probably have enjoyed my time a lot more with Neverwinter. But what is here isn't bad, it's just not amazing. The graphics, while dated, still look decent for 2023, with music and presentation still holding up as well, with some of the music tracks having a fitting D&D aesthetic. So overall, here is my final thoughts on Neverwinter.
Neverwinter is definitely a game for fans of Dungeons & Dragons. Some of the adventure campaigns are inspired by some of the popular campaign modules that the real Dungeons & Dragons offers, giving veteran D&D players an extra depth of appreciation if you've experienced them. The action combat system of Neverwinter is definitely one of its main draws. It's not a perfect combat system, as I've explained with some of its delays, but I can't deny that fans of faster-based combat systems will like it. The game definitely felt like it respected my time as a player, requiring very little of me to get to cap level and complete content. That doesn't mean you can't play the game on a hardcore level if you want to, but I felt like I could take a step away from the game as needed and still jump right back in. The game is completely free to play with new content still coming on a regular basis. It's also playable on Xbox and PlayStation consoles, but unfortunately it doesn't support crossplay. Lastly, the game actually has a decent amount of players online, so finding a guild to join or dungeon party isn't as tough as some may think it to be. Unfortunately, once again, like many of the MMOs I've covered on the channel, PvP is a forgotten form of content in Neverwinter. From what I've read online, if you want to PvP, join a guild that supports it or play during PvP events. While crafting has a neat idea behind it, its execution feels pointless with how the game works. Pretty much everything you can craft quickly becomes outclassed by what you will naturally get rewarded from in questing or dungeons, unless you pay money to get the better artisans, which leads into the game's monetization. Like a lot of the free-to-play MMORPGs, the cash shop can be seen as pay-to-win. Neverwinter at least has a system in which you can earn cash shop currency through gameplay, but there will be some who will just pay the money to skip through the grind. And come on, it has loot boxes. The game has quite a number of classes to choose from if you include the subclasses, but the unfortunate part is the lack of customization in these classes. There isn't any true talent trees like you'll see in Rift or World of Warcraft. Each class only gets a few different choices in spells and perks, and that's really about it. Finally, while Neverwinter has a variety of content people can jump into, most of it feels pretty repetitive especially the questing. I can forgive repetitive questing to an extent if there is enough of a variety of them, but Neverwinter's is literally only a few different tasks, and dungeons aren't much better. Thankfully, the stories and lore make up for those shortcomings. So that's my thoughts on Neverwinter. For those out there who play, comment down below if you agree on some of the points I made in this video or if you disagree. If you haven't played Neverwinter, let me know if you plan to give it a try. Don't forget to like the video if you want to support my content, follow all my social media links down below if you want to, subscribe to the channel for more MMORPG videos, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.